Many investors may be asking questions like, will the U.S. unemployment rate exceed 4%? Or maybe even a question like, will the stock bond correlation stay positive? Truthfully, there seems to be one universal question that everyone is asking, and that is, what's next? We're going to break it all down for you right now on UBS Trending. Hello again, everybody. Thank you for joining us. I'm Anthony Pastore, and this is UBS Trending. I'm in the studio with my friend and colleague, Jason Dreho. Uh, Jason, I, I don't want to, like, completely, you know, preempt everything that we're going to talk about today from my introduction. But people are asking what's next. But really, before we get to that, when we look at, it's been a, 2023 was a fascinating year for markets. We talked a lot about it. When we look at the yield on the 10-year, we looked at the way equities just outperformed, particularly the Magnificent Seven in tech. There's so much that happened there, and the Fed. What's, what's changing? I mean, we're expecting perhaps a soft landing now. Maybe that debate might finally be behind us. Maybe, so, but what's changed in your opinion? So from a market discussion, what's moving the market? I mean, AI can still be a factor, but from a macro perspective, yeah. 2023 was very much a debate about, is it the soft landing or hard landing, or soft landing versus recession? I think by the end of last year and now early to 2024, the data's coming in such that the consensus certainly shifted towards it is a soft landing. So it's almost that debate has been resolved. And it's semantics of how you want to define a soft landing, but I would say like we are there now, something has to happen for that not to happen. Right. So the real debate in the markets now shifted from like, is it a soft landing or hard landing to like, what sort of soft landing? What are we soft landing to? There's been so much focus to like, whether it would be a soft or hard landing. Well, now that we've got it, it's a little bit, I think, you know, use the analogy of like the dog that's chasing the fire engine and finally caught it. Well, now what does it do? So they're kind of asking the question of what kind of comes next. So I think that's like the key thing. And there's a lot of macro debates of like, yeah, what, what does the Fed do going forward? What does the economic cycle look like? Where are we in the cycle? Things of that sort. So I think that's the key driver. So we kind of got the soft landing, but it's a little bit like, what's next for the markets, for the economy overall? I think that's kind of where investors are sort of running. Yeah. Where do we go from here? And there's diverse views. There's de definitely a dispersed views of how this could all play out. Yeah, I mean, truthfully, this is a really good time to be talking to a financial advisor. As, you know, and they also have questions for you and the CIO as well, which is great because if they're not asking the questions, they're certainly not paying attention. I want to just take a moment because you recently put out a blog called Things That Make You Go Home, which is one of my favorite 90s songs from the CNC Music Factory. But in that report, more importantly, you ask a lot of questions. One of them actually stands out to me. It says, if the pandemic did not happen, would the economy be in a 15 uh, in year 15 of an expansion? That's one. And the other one, you talk about the, are we still in the midst of a roaring 20s regime, which you and I talked about back in 2021 or two. All those questions that you pose in here, what are your thoughts on that? So in order to answer like what's next for the economy, and I have a very practical answer, yeah. I think it helps sometimes, especially after a year where this time last year the consensus was we'd get a recession, and instead we actually had an economy that did far better than expected. So you kind of have to wonder like, what's wrong with, or like, where did I get it wrong? Why is it wrong? Am I not understanding what's going on in the economy? So kind of asking some sort of abstracted questions, including, Suppose there wasn't a pandemic, if we go back to January of 2020, we were in year 10 and a half in expansion, will we be in year 15 of an expansion? It's, it's a thought experiment, but really that question and other questions on the blog, a lot of them get down to just how prone is the U.S. economy to recession. Right. And sort of what I would conclude, I think given the state of the U.S. economy, the nature of economic activity, we are a knowledge-based services economy. We're relatively capital light, which means we're also not that interest rate sensitive. And we saw last year the Fed raised rates and somehow the consumer continued to spend. Uh, you know, it's just a different economy today than it was 40 or 50 years ago. So if you're using models and sort of, you know, calibrations based on the 70s, 80s, and even the 90s, they're going to be less applicable today. So absent a shock, I'd say that the reason why, you know, we didn't have a recession now is the economy by and large is pretty flexible and nimble, can avoid a recession. So that's an important consideration when you even have questions. Another one I posed, where are we in the economic cycle if we have a soft landing? Mm -hmm. Are we late cycle, mid cycle? If it was a recession, you come out of it, you'd say your early cycle. That's but right. So, so there's but we never really got into a recession. We didn't get a recession. Right. And this also matters just for investing because investors often have a playbook where they say late cycle, you know, you want to get a little more defensive, right. get a little more quality. Uh, you go into recession, you're about to come out, then you want to start to buy the early cyclicals because that's when they could really run. So how investors position themselves, what they want to buy will depend on also how they think of the cycle. And even if I have disagreement, say, with you, like you think we're late cycle, I'm mid-cycle, if the market is more in your camp, we have to be prepared as investors. Hey, what I think should work may not work just because 
the consensus doesn't go there. So I think all these kind of questions are out there being debated. I think these will be the debates this year, not so much for sure. soft hard landing, but like, where are we in the cycle? You mentioned where the regime. Is it a regime that is sort of roaring 20s like, or is it that kind of past, this is temporary, something else? A lot of uncertainty, a lot of questions. I think that's going to be the real macro focus of the markets this yeah. year. Yeah, and think, it's fascinating to me when you think about the job of the central bank, which is to control the flow of money. And when they're doing a tightening cycle, the whole idea is to kind of take funds away from consumers to slow things down. But it just didn't really happen. So, it, so you're, we're working in sort of unprecedented times where the, the history books, you can almost throw them away and start fresh from 2020 or maybe just a few years before that. So it's, it's fascinating to see your thought process of where we've been to kind of figure out, and here's the question is, what's next? That's the real question. Investors out there are going, we didn't expect the central bank to do what they did, and certainly we didn't expect the job markets to be as strong as they were. Uh, we didn't expect rates on the 10-year to hit 5% and then fall back down to a 387 or so by the end of the year in like less than a month and a half. So, so many factors out there. How do you figure out what's next and what should investors know? So ultimately, we have to have a view on how it will play out this year, and that's you know, the host view. So our view is soft landing, and so I think we're a little more optimistic on a soft landing today than even two months ago, just given the economic data, growth being continue to be resilient and strong, inflation coming down such that now we think the Fed will cut four times this year, mm -hmm. starting in May, a little later and a little less than the market's pricing, but it's sort of moving generally in our direction. But an overall pretty benign macro environment, that's kind of what we think is coming next, for at least for this year. Then it, when it comes to the markets, while well, we see upside in equities and bonds and other risk asset classes, a lot of good news is priced in. It was priced in as certainly late last year, but I think there's kind of more to go on that front. Uh, you know, For something like you know, equities, there's a concern that now that the S&P 500 hit an all-time high you know, very recently, that, well, stocks are expensive, and there's always concern, could they roll over? Well, history tells us, one, that all-time highs tell you nothing about the returns of the next year. It's, they're kind of like average returns. Mm -hmm. Also, if you have an environment where the Fed is cutting interest rates, stocks kind of rally into the news, but they really rally after the Fed is cutting. So again, that should provide some further tailwind for risk assets and equities later this year. Uh, in terms of like the you know, fixed income, we know that bond yields tend to decline once the Fed is cutting. That means good returns for bonds. But also, if you're sitting in cash and you've been on the sidelines getting 5.5% for the past year or so, that means you're going to be reinvesting at lower rates and other asset classes will do better. So this is also a good time to think about managing your liquidity and don't wait too long because if you do, you're going to miss the upside and you're going to be investing at lower rates. So that's kind of how we think of as what's next for this year. But the final thing I would say is, Given those questions I've, you know, we kind of highlighted, yeah. a lot of discussion, where are we in the cycle? What's the right regime? Things of that sort. Investors have, I think, low conviction. There's dispersed views. So as information comes in, so the consensus can shift from one view to the other. Just like last year, we had multiple shifts between soft landing, hard landing, back to soft landing, back to hard landing. It kind of ended on the soft landing. So you saw huge swings in the markets. The 10-year treasury, 10 treasury yield is a perfect example. Last year, 2023, it began at 3.87%, at some point dropped to 3.0%, reached high of 5%, finished the year at 3.87%. A complete round trip. A complete round That's trip. That's right. So I think what's next, probably more of the same. The 10 year could sort of end this year around you know, 375, but it could go as high as 45 or high or as low as 3%. Could see these market swings as, as investors assess, not a soft landing, hard landing, but like, where are we in a cycle? What is the regime? Because again, no one has a lot of conviction and it's going to sort of shift around as the year plays on. I probably have the highest conviction on that narrative shifting more so than convinced that we're going to have a really soft landing or Goldilocks outcome. Thanks, Jason. It, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really fascinating story and certainly one that we'll be talking about for many years to come. And I know we'll be talking about this over the coming months of the year. Good to see you, Jason. Thanks for dropping by. And thank you for joining us. Obviously, you may have more questions. You can find more information on what's going on from Jason and the rest of the CIO, particularly our house view at ubs.com forward slash views. That is our Insights website. Plus, there's lots of content on social media, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and X. Plus, you can check out our dedicated Instagram channel at UBS Trending for all the UBS Studios content uh, that you're not going to find anywhere else. And as always, Please, if you have any questions, make sure you're talking to your financial advisor. Until next time, I'm Anthony Pastore. Have a great day, everybody. And remember to keep your eyes on what's trending. We'll see you soon.